Driving San Antonio starts right now. New this morning, the latest on a two vehicle crash on the northwest side that ends with four people hurt. Police tell us what charges a driver involved could now be facing. New details in the Christmas Day bombing that destroyed parts of Nashville. I'm ABC's Avery Harper in Washington. I'll tell you what investigators are revealing about the moments leading up to it. Coming up. Taking a look outside at live cam. Oh my gosh, is that really live cam? Dang, 61 degrees if you can see anything out there. Is this fog? Is this rain? My, Mike is back. He'll let us know if rain is in our future in just a bit. All right, good morning. It is Monday, December 28th. Sarah Costa joining us just down the hall in Studio B. And Sarah, you actually gave a pretty good definition of what was out there. I just said, ew. Ew. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, I walked out today and I had my jacket on and like I'm always ready to be cold. And I was like, ooh, this is kind of yeah. yucky out there, Mike. Yeah, it is. You know, we've got uh, just humid conditions out there. It was very, very warm yesterday, made it up into the mid 70s. And today is going to be right up there again. We're starting off extremely warm and humid this morning, obviously. And visibility now for the time being at the airport, it's at 10 miles, but Bernie now just uh, roughly 45 minutes ago, there was hardly anything as far as fog out toward uh, I 10. But Bernie stage is down a mile and a quarter, mile three quarters at Hondo. Got some fog around Pleasanton, a little bit creeping into Stinson as well. And that's going to continue and is usually the situation right around sunrise and just after that is when we see some of the thickest fog and a lot of it off to the east not as much over there around say rock springs down toward carrizo springs but again we've got some around hondo and it may start to creep a little bit westward as well so those will be sticking around throughout the morning there may be some mist associated with it too so could be i even saw a couple of damp spots on the roads coming into work this morning look at these numbers i mean these are closer to what the normal high temperatures are in the low 60s right now mid upper 50s low 60s and that's going to be in the situation all day long and oh yes mountain cedar it is definitely there 2800 on yesterday's count and throughout the rest of today gonna to be another warm one uh, we will see a bit more sunshine later on this afternoon uh, some mist hanging around here this morning some of that stubborn fog and then later on tonight the clouds going to come back in we'll have a couple of showers here and there and then rain chances start to go up the next couple of days may actually see a few thunderstorms by wednesday thursday Going to get interesting. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Samuel King. Anything going on, sir? Uh, good morning, Mike. Nothing going on right now. We'll keep an eye on the fog and see how it impacts things. So let's take a look at Badera Road between 1604 and 410. 11 minutes uh, each way this morning. So that's something to watch out for. A small bit of a delay. Looking at some travel times. 281 from Belverde. 29 minutes. 26 minutes right now uh, from Bernie and I-10. We'll keep an eye on that as the fog continues to grow. And looking at Trans Guide 1604 and Bandera. Sarah, looking pretty good right now. Max, Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Well, San Antonio police say a driver is facing a possible DWI charge following a two vehicle crash on the northwest side that injured four people. The crash happened around seven o'clock last night on Camino Bandera and Bandera Road. Police say no one driver says please say the driver failed to yield to the right of the way of another vehicle that caused the crash. The driver was taken to University Hospital for a head injury. The two other passengers inside that vehicle were also taken to University Hospital for minor injuries. The other driver involved in the crash sustained a minor injury to his arm and was treated on scene, according to officials. Police say the driver who failed to yield to the other vehicle could face charges for DWI and narcotics possession. However, the investigation is still ongoing. Now to that Christmas Day blast, the damaged parts of downtown Nashville, leaving the country with a lot of questions. And this morning, law enforcement officers who rushed to evacuate area residents, they're now being heal hailed as heroes. ABC's Avery Harper with what we're learning about the man accused of causing it. This morning, new traffic camera footage showing the moment an explosion rocked downtown Nashville. Shortly after 1 a.m. Christmas morning, this RV seen parked outside the AT&T building. <laughs> Authorities viewing the surveillance video of the RV and an ominous warning. <laughs> Along with a 60s pop song. It's downtown by Petulia Clark. Investigators are now looking into Anthony Warner's psychiatric and medical history for clues to a motive. He was present when the bomb went off and that he perished in the bombing. Following the explosion, agents could be seen carrying out bags of evidence from a home associated with him. 
and reportedly exploring whether he may have been motivated by a paranoia over 5G cellular technology. Meanwhile, six Nashville police officers are now describing the moments before Friday's explosion. One of them was Officer Brenna Hosey, who helped a mother of four evacuate. She said, OK, let me get my kids. And that kind of just like put my heart up in my throat. The force of the blast left Officer James Wells with temporary hearing loss. And then I hear a loud boom. And uh, as I'm stumbling, because uh, it, it rocked me that hard, I started stumbling. I just tell myself to stay on your feet, stay alive. The Rasmussen family made it out of their home just in time. As, as we're driving away, um, this massive explosion. I mean, it's this huge. I mean, I was looking forward driving and I hear the sound and the whole car shifts. Officials say they're working to determine if the AT&T building where that RV was parked was the bomber's intended target. Avery Harper, ABC News, Washington. Now to the latest in the pandemic, a thousand people with the coronavirus are in the hospital this morning in Bear County. This as Metro Health has updated the latest numbers after several holiday days. Now Bear County saw 1,282 new cases with 999 backlog cases. Now the total confirmed cases now sitting at 112,218. The amount of people who have died here in Bear County, 1,510. Well, here's a look at the hospitalization rate. The last time we had a thousand people hospitalized was back on July 29th. Right now, 299 people are in the ICU. That's up by nine since Friday and 159 are in ventilator. 17% of staffed hospital beds are available. Time now, 436, 61 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, a first look at an actress scheduled to be released from prison after her ro role in the Varsity Blues college admission scandal. And next, President Donald Trump signing the $900 billion coronavirus relief bill. We'll explain what that means for most Americans. Taking a look outside with live cam, that fog is here, like Mike was saying, 61 degrees, a bit warmer today. But what does our future look like? Maybe some rain. We have some colder temperatures coming in later in the week. Mike will let us know when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Monday. After days of opposition and hours before the federal government was set to shut down, President Donald Trump signing the $900 billion coronavirus relief package. So Congress passed the legislation last Monday, and this took months and months of negotiation in the Senate. The package includes $600 checks for Americans who earn less than $75,000 a year. So after it was passed, President Donald Trump initially called for the bill to be revised. He wanted to add $2,000 checks instead of the $600 checks. He, in fact, went to Twitter saying he refused to sign it until his call was answered. However, he didn't officially say he would veto it. Well, police in Illinois have released the identity and mugshot of a man accused of shooting and killing three people at a bowling alley. Police say 37-year-old Duke Webb is in custody and charged with murder. Duke is an active military member and a Florida resident. Three people were hurt during Saturday's incident, including two teenagers. A 62-year-old man who received multiple gunshot wounds is in critical condition. Investigators believe the shooting was a random attack. Japan now planning to introduce a mobile tracking app for overseas travelers. And this is huge because of the Olympics. So it's all in an effort to stop the spread of COVID-19 before the Tokyo Olympics. All visitors to Japan are going to be required to install the app. It uses GPS to track your movements in the country. Now, Japan's digital transformation minister says the app is still under development, but it is expected to be released before the Olympics. And remember, they got postponed because of the pandemic. They are now scheduled for July 23rd of 2021. Time now, 441, 61 degrees out. Well, lots of people in San Antonio have kept our great city going through this pandemic. Up next, we take a look back at all the interesting great people we've met this year on our segment, What's Up South Texas. And next, an update to the Varsity Blues scandal. Actress Lori Laughlin expected to be released from prison today after serving her sentence. We have the update. Actress Lori Loughlin is due to be freed from a California prison today after serving her sentence for her role in the Varsity Blues college, college admission scandal. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has that in this morning's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, walking free, 
You have no idea how long I've waited to hear somebody say that. Lachlan reported to the Federal Correctional Institution in Dublin, California on October 30th. The facility is currently experiencing a COVID outbreak affecting over 180 inmates and three staff members. But her team telling ABC News, Lori is in isolation, so she is in no danger. The rules are that when you enter, you go into isolation for two weeks, and when you exit, you do the same. Lachlan was sentenced to two months in prison after pleading guilty for her role in the Varsity Blues college admission scandal. So what's next for Lachlan? And could she stage an acting comeback like fellow convicted Varsity Blues parent Felicity Huffman? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. Well, 2020 is coming to an end, and it is that time to reflect back on how the community of South Texas has kept us going despite this pandemic. Sure has. We've all gone through frustrations, restrictions, and losses, but you continue to spread love in our community. Here's our What's Up South Texas Year in Review. Like my ice hockey skills, the year 2020 has been on a struggle bus for all of us. So much so, you just wanted it to stop at times. But you know who didn't stop? All of you. Keeping South Texas filled with fun, artistic masterpieces, and service to others. Bringing that old school feel back to the barber industry. You kept us smiling. Does this look good? <laughs> I'm just kidding. And you kept us inspired. We've been feeding ever since COVID started. Because of you, we saw what it was like to go up, up, and away through small aircraft. Remind me of Stevie Wonder. I am Stevie Wonder. Go, 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 go. We learned Labradors could dive like humans, and we were reminded that despite obstacles like blindness, you can still play ice hockey, swim and play instruments, and even continue lawn services. You can't let no obstacles, like you say, uh, uh, get in your, uh, in your way. Speaking of which, let's not forget about Braille, the blind deaf therapy dog that helps children with special needs in Morgan's Wonderland. He's the one that makes the difference. We saw a photographer passionate about families and one passionate about birds. We saw entrepreneurial teens creating a website to feed the homeless, a 12-year-old makeup artist who gives makeup tutorials for adults and children, and an 8-year-old mathematician who tutored elementary kids during quarantine. On What's Up South Texas, you showed us real issues like addictions, but you also showed us together we have the strength to recover and help others in the process. There's not a thing as rock bottom. If you're alive and breathing, you can always go up. There's always hope. It's never too late. Another real issue you brought attention to in our community, PTSD. This dog trainer was on it, turning dogs set to be euthanized into service animals for veterans. And I do it to give back to my country. We also entered the musical world with musicians who teach military veterans how to play and write music. And we met a ballet couple who shares their love for the dance with the community. Oh, ho, 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 ho. We met a nurse who removes unwanted tattoos and a woman who has dedicated her life to making children's clothes for charities. 2020 has been a roller coaster ride, but through it all, you taught us how to have faith. It just shows me not to give up. And how to push forward. For that, we say thank you on What's Up South Texas. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. I love those. I know, and I love that there were several dogs also in there, too, because they're doing their part as well. Absolutely. All right, 61 degrees out there. We saw some fog. So, Samuel, is wet roads, anything going on out there? Uh, things are pretty quiet right now. We'll show you some uh, roads in just a moment. But as you look here, pretty, look, uh, pretty clear, I should say. On the south side here, sinks a bit of yellow on 410 uh, between 37 and Palo Alto. It'll take you about eight minutes now. And you said you wanted to see fog. Here we are. Uh, 37 at uh, Salado Creek. That looks good. And we have one more here. This is 37181. This is uh, pretty bad there. So that's something to keep out for if you're going to be uh, heading uh, northbound or into downtown from that area. Uh, so we'll definitely keep an eye on this throughout the morning, guys.
All right, so Mike, is that going to be something we see throughout the day? Or are we going to see some sun today? We'll see a little bit of sun later on this afternoon, uh, but the fog is definitely going to be sticking around this morning. And yeah, it's definitely patchy in nature. First of all, Aww. I got to show you cute <laughs> pictures. Yes, look at the, the face. I don't know if the face is saying I'm so cute or it's like, get this thing off me. But, <laughs> or I did something wrong. It works. Yeah, it works. It's adorable, though. Okay, not so adorable is this picture. And you know, we are starting to see a little bit of fog. This is 410 I-10 looking down off to the, uh, the east. And visibility, get it. Depends on where you are. Still reporting good visibility up in the Braunfels at the airport, Port SA, and then Stinson Half Mile and Mile and a Quarter now. Kerrville, Bernie has dropped down as well. And then we have thicker fog off to the east. Gonzalez Quarter Mile, same thing at Victoria. Uvalde is now just, what, 15, 20 minutes ago at the start of the show. Uvalde had 10 miles visibility. Now that fog has thickened up. So it is going to be sticking around for the next couple of hours. And again, could be some dampish roads out there as well. Dew point temperature. Temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere. Of course, late last week they were really, really down, and now the humidity is definitely back with a vengeance. And these dew points in some places, the dew points gone up 31 degrees from this time yesterday. 12 here in town, 17 degrees higher in Pleasanton, and all that moisture continued to pump on in here, and it's going to remain very humid today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. And as that kind of goes up. That's also kind of working in conjunction and rain chances will be going up. We'll have a few showers around here tomorrow and then Wednesday, a better chance for showers, even a couple of thunderstorms preceding the next front that comes through and that's going to drop the bottom out. But also the timing is a little bit, uh, a little bit iffy as of right now. Here's what's going on. We've got a low which is setting up off to the west of us and this is uh, think of it as just a cold pocket of air and that cold pocket of air is going to come right in basically on top of us. And as it does, there's still going to be some leftover moisture. So there is a chance, especially obviously in the hill country, and this would be late Wednesday night and early on Thursday, that there could be a little bit of mixed precipitation uh, and even scraping northern portions of Bear County right there along the escarpment is usually where we see some of this on the uh, the north and northwest side of Bear County. And this would be Thursday morning through probably about midday and there may be some leftover clouds. Now, if you are planning on going out on New Year's Eve, things are going to be clearing out quite nicely. And then this, the New Year is going to be fantastic. We'll whip back into a zone of flow. We'll have cool mornings and nice afternoons. And that'll be the situation in through the first part of then the first week of New Year's. But as far as today is concerned, we're going to have fog this morning, maybe a little bit of mist around here, 69 degrees at noon. We'll see a little bit of sunshine then starting to peak on through. Uh, I'm going for 73 today. I think we have enough sunshine out there mixing with the clouds to get us up into the close to the mid 70s, about 10 degrees above normal. Then a couple of showers tonight. We'll have a few showers around tomorrow. Wednesday, we'll have a pretty good chance for showers and thunderstorms. That front moves through late in the day. Wind will shift around. We will hit 70. And then temperatures drop off and we'll be down around freezing. You know, 36 here in town means close to freezing or below freezing in parts of the hill country. So that chance for a little bit of mixed precipitation, mm -hmm. nothing's going to be sticking because the ground is too warm, uh, but just something to Something to be on the lookout for. Good way to end up this year. Word on that forecast that can get people really excited. Yes, I indeed. know. But yes. the new year is going to be starting off fantastic. So. Yesterday we gave Justin a hard time. We're like, oh, so you're, you're saying you're saying there's a chance it can snow? And he's like, no. <laughs> And now you have snow. The word Ooh. snow is there. <laughs> a, a little bit, a little bit of mix. Okay. Okay, we're gonna you're go into this real quietly. I don't think you're gonna be making any snowmen <laughs> from this one. So. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 453, 61 degrees out. Up next, a look at how the latest Wonder Woman movie did at the box office over the Christmas holiday weekend. Let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, one one six, fireball four, daily four, zero one eight three, fireball six. Cash 5, 3, 4, 12, 14, 19. Texas Lotto, 12, 13, 18, 25, 32, 33. Powerball, this is the one I don't believe actually had a winner for 340, 341 million. Mm. 10, 24, 27, 35, 53, Powerball 18, Power Play 2. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Monday. A couple of big name movies hitting the box office over Christmas holiday weekend. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Chris Watson. 
everyone will see. Wonder Woman 1984's time is clearly here. The Christmas Day debut in theaters took at a pandemic box office record $16.7 million domestically. That's nearly double what the debut of Christopher Nolan's Tenet made in September. The simultaneous debut on HBO Max drew nearly half of its 12.6 million subscribers Friday alone, according to Warner Brothers. They're pleased enough to have already given the green light to a third Wonder Woman film. The Tom Hanks drama News of the World debuted in second at the box office with 2.4 million bucks. Respectable enough, all things considered. The revenge thriller Promising Young Woman bound in fifth. Church Street Blue. Bluegrass guitar great Tony Rice passed away Christmas Day. Ricky Skaggs and Steve Martin among those posting condolences on social media. And Denzel Washington is 66 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. You know, I didn't see Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. but I did watch Soul last night that okay. came out a couple of days ago on Disney+. Plus. Oh, my gosh. Really? So good. Good. You know, the, the, we talked about it yesterday, the connection to San Antonio. Yeah. They, uh, one of the writers is from, I believe, Alamo Heights, gra a graduate there. Yeah. Um, but it, phenomenal. I recommend it. Okay. I heard uh, less than stellar reviews about Wonder Woman. Yeah. I don't know about that one. I'll probably still see it. All right. 458, 61 degrees out. <laughs> well, still ahead on GMSA, what's next now that President Donald Trump has signed the $900 billion coronavirus relief package? And would you like your car horn to sound more like an animal? Yes. Okay. <laughs> How Tesla is possibly making that happen. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A fight between roommates turned deadly. We have the latest details. And after days of opposition and hours before the federal government was going to shut down, President Donald Trump signed a $900 billion coronavirus relief package. And here at home, yes, I promise our live cams are working. This is just what the conditions are this morning. We're checking with Mike, tell you what the rest of the day could look like. Good morning, Monday, December 28th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. You know, I when I drove in just like, what, an hour, an hour and a half ago, it. I didn't have any of that fog at all. And now it just kind of appeared out of all of a sudden. Couldn't even see out there. Yeah, a lot of places did not have fog about, like you said, you know, 45 minutes an hour ago, and it is definitely thicken up and is going to continue to thicken up as the, the morning rolls on. We are at 63 degrees right now, actually above what the normal high temperature is right now. And then you look at that bottom number, the dew point is at 60. So we're right on that threshold where not only is there a bunch of humidity, but you kind of start to feel it as well. Not that you're going to be sweating when you go outside, but it is definitely humid. Temperatures today, we are going to make it up into the uh, about to low to mid 70s. We'll be right around the mid 60s, just about noontime or so. And then later on, we will uh, top off about 73 degrees. We'll have some sunshine mixed in as well. The aquifer did go up three tenths of a foot yesterday and mountain cedar. Yeah, I think that's why I had a little bit uh, fuzzy this morning after being out of town with all that mountain cedar hanging around here. And you know, we're just getting into the throes of that season. All right, here's what it looks like as far as visibility. Now, out at the airport, still 10 miles officially. Port SA 10 miles, but those numbers can change very quickly. Stinson has now dropped to just a quarter mile visibility. It continues to drop around Bernie Stage, Hondo at two, two and a half, Kerrville, and Victoria Gonzalez have a lot of fog, and there's plenty of fog around Uvalde, and that has continued to drop down. So this will continue to get thicker as the morning goes on. It's going to be sticking around through most all of the morning commute and even a little bit after that. So just kind of grin and bear it, and there may be a couple of uh, even some spots of mist. There was kind of some damp spots on the road when I came into work this morning. So warm and humid today, some sunshine later on this afternoon, and then tomorrow, warm and a few showers. We'll have a couple of showers trying to develop later on tonight. About a 20, maybe 30% chance for some rain tomorrow. Better chance of rain on Wednesday, and strong fronts going to be moving through late in the day on Wednesday. Temperatures will continue to drop down, and so Thursday we actually could see a little bit of uh, mixed precipitation, maybe some uh, snow flurries thrown in, especially in the hill country, and that would be for Thursday morning, maybe up through about mid-morning. Then we'll be clearing out for New Year's Eve very nicely. And good, looks like a very nice start to uh, 2021.
definitely interesting to say. Uh, details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Samuel King. Anything uh, going on with this fog yet, sir? Uh, we can see here it's starting to show up on the roads. You show like where the worst visibility was to the north and west, Bernie and east of Seguin right now. But we do have a crash here. Uh, this is at 37 to 410. Uh, so this is something to watch out for. And we, and we mentioned out of that area there was some fog. Uh, so look out for that. And looking at some drive times now, if you're on 37 from Floresville, 31 minutes. On 37 from Pleasanton, 29 minutes, 25 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie. And taking a look at Transguide right now, uh, looking at L Loop 410, that looks okay. At I-10 at the Y looks okay as well. But of course, we're going to be keeping an eye on the fog. Max, back over to you. Thank you, Samuel. New this morning, San Antonio police telling us a man dead after a fight escalated on the northwest side. So this was the scene just after 10 last night at the Tetro Student Village Apartments. SAPD on the scene telling us two roommates actually got into a fight that ended up in the parking lot. Police say that when they got there, they found one man standing on a curb and another man on the ground with a severe head wound. The victim pronounced dead at the scene by EMS. SAPD telling us the other man was detained and will likely be charged with murder. Also new this morning, a man is in critical condition following a crash involving a motorcycle. It happened just after midnight in the 5400 block of Grissom near Bandera Road on the west side. San Antonio police say the man lost control of his motorcycle and crashed into a curb. SAPD says when they got there, the man was unresponsive on the sidewalk and was taken into the hospital in critical condition. Help is finally on the way for millions of Americans after President Donald Trump signed the COVID relief bill just last night. In addition to greenlighting the new round of direct payments, the president's signature restarts lapsed unemployment benefits and dodges a looming government shutdown. ABC's Mona Karza Abdi has the details. Nearly one week after calling it a disgrace, President Trump is backing down, agreeing late Sunday to sign a $2.3 trillion coronavirus relief and government funding bill, averting a government shutdown just hours before tonight's deadline. In a statement, the president saying, quote, I am signing this bill to restore unemployment benefits, stop evictions, provide rental assistance, add money for the Paycheck Protection Program, and much more. The president, spending the weekend golfing in Florida, had faced intense pressure to give in as unemployment benefits for 14 million Americans expired. It took Congress six months to negotiate the bipartisan relief bill. The president's own team, including Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, helped negotiate it. But then the president last week demanding last minute changes, tweeting, quote, I simply want to get our great people $2,000 rather than the measly 600 that is now in the bill. Some Republicans criticized him for not raising his objections earlier. If you want to make a $2,000 check, negotiate that from the beginning. I understand he wants to be remembered for advocating for big checks, but... Uh... The danger is he'll be he'll, he'll be remembered for chaos and, and misery and erratic behavior if uh, if he allows this to expire. The president in a statement last night suggested he signed the bill after the Senate agreed to consider increasing the checks to $2,000, which the House is expected to pass today. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell made no such commitment in his statement overnight, saying only that the president's, quote, leadership has prevented a government shutdown at a time when our nation could not have afforded one. Meanwhile, the delay in approving the bill already having consequences. Those Americans getting the extra $300 in unemployment benefits will likely miss one week of payments because of the delay. I worry and I care about myself and my family. We need COVID relief so bad. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. All right, well, there are new two, now two vaccines authorized for emergency use in the United States and here in San Antonio. Vaccines from Moderna and Pfizer being distributed and administered across the country, but there's still a lot of questions looming. Dr. Andrea, Andrea Shields is a maternal fetal medicine doctor with the Children's Hospital of San Antonio and joined us live on our Leading SA segment yesterday to talk about vaccine questions in regard to pregnant women. We have a little bit of information, at least, that that vaccine is safe in pregnant women and breastfeeding women. In fact, about 84 women who got the vaccination during the trials became pregnant, and those pregnancies um, did well. Uh, there wasn't any increased risk of miscarriage or adverse outcomes compared to women who didn't get that vaccine. So as far as the mRNA technology, it seems to be uh, safe in pregnancy. 
This is only a piece of what Dr. Shields had to say. We also talked about the possible impact on breastfeeding, the risk of COVID for pregnant mothers and future studies. Now you can find the entire interview with Dr. Shields right now on KSAT.com. Sarah and I have fascinating interviews every Sunday morning, 8 a.m. during our leading essay segments. If you ever have any questions or suggestions on who you'd like to hear from, you can submit them right now. We have an entire question submission section. Time now, 509, 63 degrees out. Well, still ahead, how Tesla is making it possible to change how our car horn sounds, something like farm animal. All right, Sarah, putting you on the spot. If you had to have your car sound like an animal, which animal would you pick? Mm. <laughs> All right, we'll come back to you on that one. Uh, next, a closer look at some of the first soldiers who settled in the San Antonio area. Oh, Max, you didn't think I would go there. Nope. Nope. Never. Well, I did. It's Monday and it's foggy outside. 63 degrees. Will we have a warm Monday morning? Mike will let us know and is possible a cold front in our future with some rain. He will also let us know when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Monday in our Tejano Moment series. We've talked about a lot of firsts, especially when it comes to Lone Star State. And now we are going to hear about the first soldiers who settled in our area. Erica Hernandez has more. As New Spain was developing the area we now know as Texas, the first settlers were soldiers. They are the foundation of our society, our communities. Uh, they bring with them uh, their morals, their, their standards. And when those first soldiers and settlers came to this area, they created Villas and what we now know as La Villita. They were handpicked because they had families and had grown up on ranches. La Villas towns, if you will translate it, are important to every community because it's the actual uh, genesis, if you will, for the growth of communities that come later. And the location of the Villa important as well. La Villita in the 1700s was near the Presidio, the Alamo, and the river. These vias would be built throughout the area and they and the settlers who lived in them are of great significance. It's extremely important that we have awareness and understanding because we're talking about the fundamental contribution of Tejanos to Texas history for 150 years prior to the Battle of the Alamo. For more on these settlers or other Tejano history, you can visit texastejano.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Time now is 5:14, 63 degrees out. Up next, the story we've been teasing of the morning. How would you <laughs> like your car to sound more like, wait, a goat? Oh, okay. What a goat sound like? Okay, well, Tesla is gonna let us know in just a bit. I've always focused on my career, but when we found out our son had autism, his future became my focus. Lavender baths always calmed him. So we turned bath time into a business. A and building it with my son has been my dream job. At Northwestern Mutual, our version of financial planning helps you live your dreams today. Find a Northwestern Mutual advisor at nm.com. Feeling sluggish or weighed down? It could be a sign that your digestive system isn't working at its best. Taking Metamucil every day can help. Metamucil psyllium fiber gels to trap and remove the waste that weighs you down. It also helps lower cholesterol and slow sugar absorption to promote healthy blood sugar levels. So you can feel lighter and more energetic. Metamucil. Support your daily digestive health. Take the Metamucil two-week challenge and feel lighter and more energetic. Sign up today at metamucil.com. In today's Tech Bites, a step towards zero emission air travel. Researchers at Oxford University have reportedly turned carbon dioxide into jet fuel. They say the process is simpler and less expensive than other alternate fuel possibilities, and they're in talks with industrial partners about production. Two Danish architects have just finished a two-month test of a collapsible shelter they like to see used on the moon. The test took place in a remote part of Greenland. The shelter is designed to take up minimum space on moonbound spacecraft. And Tesla's new software update will allow drivers to change the sound of their horn with preloaded noises, including goats and other animals. Tesla CEO Elon Musk even tweeted about it without mentioning a certain bodily function, which is also an option. We'll leave it there. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. All right, there you go. Is that, is that all you were hoping for and more? <laughs> 
story delivered so much. That made me so happy. There you go. Is that going to entice you to buy a Tesla now? <laughs> yes. All right. Well, speaking Childish of cars. Childish humor, man. It gets me. <laughs> speaking of cars, how are the roadways looking, Samuel? Beep, beep. <laughs> Got some. Fog starting to creep into the area now showing up in northwest Bear County and up in Bernie and east of Seguin. We also have a crash here. Uh, this is the southeast side here, 37 at 410. This is 37 southbound to the 410 westbound of ramp there, and you can start to see uh, the delay. Uh, we mentioned I-10 in Bernie. It's going to take you 25 minutes from downtown, and then inside 1604 to downtown, uh, 13 minutes. So it's still moving pretty well there. And taking a look here at the fog, this is 37181, just about south of where uh, that crash is. You can see the visibility is pretty bad in that area and getting worse, Mike. Yes, it is indeed. You know, back to the whole Tesla thing. I think they just need a, maybe an animal sound in general, not mm. for the horn, because you can't hear them coming. It's oh, like a car. Mm. they're very quiet. So maybe if it was the clopping of hooves or something. There you go. <laughs> Mike, when are you getting your Tesla? <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, my question is, though, I mean, we drove up to Memphis to see relatives. <laughs> right. And but how do you make it? 750 miles of charge. I think you just got to hope that there's a charging station on the way. But you got to plan so accordingly. Charge too. You wouldn't Day overnight. That 12 hour trip's going to be 24. No kidding. Anyway, uh, this was from a couple of days ago, but an absolutely beautiful picture in Floresville. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect shot. And uh, yeah, these pictures are not that great. We can't actually see some. Uh, this is the on top of the building, so it's going to look worse from this vantage point. But uh, yeah, it's getting kind of thick out there. Now, technically, still Port S.A. and uh, San Antonio International, New Braunfels, 10 miles visibility. It has dropped to a mile and a third there at Randolph, quarter mile Stinson. Uh, let's see, Bernie's still at three quarters of a mile. A lot of fog off to the west now around New Valley and then off to the east. And again, this is going to continue to thicken up. These visibility numbers can change moment by moment. So you just really have to watch it. And as you saw some of the trans guide pictures, that uh, Sam showed it can get you can basically turn the corner and run into a wall of fog. All right, here's what the uh, humidity dew point temperatures are up in the upper 50s, low 60s. They are going to remain high. It's going to be very humid not only today, but also tomorrow. And the nice thing is, though, that's at least going to feed some rain. We will have, uh, you know, there's some mist around this morning and then a couple of showers uh, going to be developing tonight. A little bit better chance for rain tomorrow and even better chance for some rain on Wednesday, which is fantastic news. Then we get the front moving in here and you can see some of that drier air, which is starting to move in here on this graphic that will start to come through late on Wednesday. So here's the uh, computer model. And again, rain chances go up Wednesday, showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Then you can see some different colors on the map, and that's that pocket of cold air, which is going to start to work its way in here. So there is the chance for a little bit of mixed precipitation in parts of the hill country. This model has it kind of grazing Bear County by about late morning, close to noon on Thursday, and that's going to be clearing on out by the evening. But there is going to be the chance for a little bit of mixed precipitation uh, early on Thursday. Now, the ground is so warm warm around here. Nothing would would stick, but um, this is going to be kind of a looks like a gee whiz sort of a thing by Thursday morning. 69 degrees today at noon. Most of the cloudy skies. We'll see some sunshine, kind of a 50 50 mix of sunshine and clouds later on today. 73 for high temperature, so about 10 degrees above normal. And then tomorrow, a very warm start again up to 72, a better chance for some rain. Then we get into Wednesday and an even better chance for rain. We will then see that front move on through here and I guess I stay in this picture for yeah, right now. Sure. Sure. What the heck? And then uh chance for some rain snow mix early on Thursday. Ooh. We clear out Thursday night and start of uh, 2020 looks great. There you go. All right, your uh, your forecast is a lot more PG than Justin. He had champagne on there. <laughs> Come on. The word oh, snow is on there? Like I, I, I like I like the champagne thing better than the snow. Yeah, we oh, got time. Me too. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Mike. 523 63 degrees out. Up next, aside from the pandemic, 2020 has also been a pretty extraordinary year for weather events. We'll take a look at the top weather moments of this past year. That's next. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Monday. A record setting hurricane season, devastating wildfires, bringing a lot of challenges to Americans across the country this year. CNN's Daryl Forges looks back at the year in weather. The 2020 Atlantic hurricane season howled into the record books. 
in April. Scientists said it will be a busy season forecasting 16 named storms. But 2020 shattered those expectations. Every name in this year's list was crossed off, as well as the first nine letters of the Greek alphabet. 2020 saw an historic 30 named storms, 12 of which made landfall in the U.S. And five of those made landfall in Louisiana. Hurricane Laura was the most devastating. There's going to be places, uh, whether it be rural or in a town, that are going to be unrecognizable. For the first time in uh, many years, we evacuated the entire National Guard. Laura roared ashore near the Louisiana-Texas border as a powerful Category 4 with 150 mile per hour winds. Buildings were shredded. Homes were destroyed Open the door and, and families lost everything. Heartbreaking, heartbreaking. It looks like it came out of a horror movie. It looks like something that was made up from a horror movie, but it's not, it's real. Everything is just torn up. It's not the same place anymore. Laura was the strongest hurricane to hit the state of Louisiana since 1856. At least 77 people were killed in the Dominican Republic, Haiti, and the U.S. And Laura caused an estimated $14 billion in damage in the U.S. During the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season, a storm made landfall in the U.S. every month from June through November. And alerts were issued for nearly every mile of the coastline from Texas to Maine. That's what led then in California. Four hours later is right here on their back door. It came too fast. Lightning sparked several fast moving wildfires that ravaged communities across California. This is the worst experience. Scary. <sighs> Hundreds of thousands of people were forced to flee, many of whom lost their homes. Everything we owned is gone. I thought we'd be able to go back home, you know that they would save it, but um, not this time. Weather conditions also made it hard for crews to contain the flames. We've been battling some triple digit heats for the first week of the fire. That heat combined with incredibly dry conditions fueled the fires and high winds helped the flames spread rapidly. More than 8,500 wildfires charred more than 4 million acres. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. Time now is 529, 63 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, President Trump has finally signed the coronavirus relief package. We'll tell you how much help Americans can expect to get. That's ahead. Plus, authorities releasing more information involving that deadly explosion in Nashville. We have the details. Good morning and happy Monday. About 532 this morning, December 28th. We are almost in 2021. Sarah, how you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. And I keep seeing all these memes like, shh, let's go into 2021 <laughs> real quiet. <laughs> well, remember going into 2020, everyone was like, this is going to be my year. It's going to be great. Mm -mm, don't do it. Didn't start off great. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. here we are. But either way, we saw a look outside. Couldn't see much. Also not starting off great. No, no, this uh, Monday is not starting off great at all. Yesterday was very, very warm. The humidity continued to come back in here overnight, and that is creating some fog out there. And visibility at the airport is at last check was still 10 miles, but in a lot of places it is um, so thick you almost can't see your hand in front of your face. 63 degrees. That's about the normal high temperature this time of year. Dew points up to 60, so a bunch of humidity there. And wind is out of the uh, south to southeast. That continues to pump the humidity on in here. Temperatures right now, Kerrville is at 59. So it's pretty much upper 50s, low 60s is the, uh, the rule of thumb all around the area right now. And as far as visibility, again, still 10 miles at the airport, Port SA, but then Stinson quarter mile. Randolph has dropped to about half of what it was a half an hour ago, roughly uh, two thirds of a mile. Hondo has dropped down a little bit and uh, elsewhere, Uvalde still holding at a half mile visibility. Gonzalez and Victoria, a lot of fog, and this will be sticking around. A lot of fog going up in toward Austin as well. So this will stick around for the next couple of hours, and we are going to be seeing then a little bit of sunshine later on today. I think kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. So we still keep uh, clouds around this morning. Then we get up to 69 at noon and right around the uh, mid 70s later on today. I think we see enough sunshine. Yesterday we got up to 75 degrees. So I'm going for 74 for high temperature. And then we'll see a couple of showers trying to pop into the picture later on tonight and a better chance of rain tomorrow. 
much better chance of rain on Wednesday, then a big strong front and the last day of the year. Maybe a little bit interesting. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Samuel King, what's going on, sir? Well, we do. You mentioning the fog and we starting in the northwest, especially Bernie, and now it's getting closer to Holota. So that's something to watch out for. So if you have to head into town, plan some extra time. Also, if you're east of Seguin, of course, all of this converging on San Antonio right now. Uh, we had this crash here at 37 and 410. It's clearing, but you still see a bit of a delay there. And looking at some travel times, at 27 minutes on 281 all the way from Belvoir. 27 minutes also uh, from Pleasanton on 37 and 25 minutes from Bernie right now and back over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Well, three people were forced to evacuate when their home caught fire overnight in Shirts. Shirts police say it happened just before two o'clock this morning in the 100 block of Oak Bloom. The home is in Pecan Grove Trailer Park, so as a precaution, nearby neighbors were also evacuated, but Shirts firefighters were able to get the fire contained quickly. So far, a cause has not been determined and no injuries were reported. Morning headlines. Despite some speculation that he might not do it, President Donald Trump finally signing that massive government spending and coronavirus relief bill just last night. As CNN's Reid Binion reports, a Democratic-led House is set to vote on the expansion of the direct payments today. I'm glad he's signing it because it's going to help a lot of people, but it, it does point up the frustration of his approach to the presidency. Democratic Congressman Adam Smith commenting on President Trump's decision to sign the coronavirus relief and government funding bill after a nearly week long delay. The president has finally decided to do that is good news. I mean, it, it, it points up the, his limitations as a president. The massive two point three trillion dollar measure extends billions of dollars in coronavirus aid and averts a government shutdown that was set to begin Tuesday. The pandemic relief provisions include extended eviction protection, enhanced unemployment benefits, and direct cash payments of $600 to individuals earning less than $75,000 a year. Those earning between $75,000 and $99,000 will also receive some funds, but it will be a smaller amount as the income increases. Lawmakers in Washington passed the bill last Monday. Then Trump objected, saying he wouldn't sign it unless payments were increased to $2,000. Many including Republicans, were displeased with that. If the president thought that that was the case, he should have weighed in eight months ago. Uh, we've been fighting for this since March or April, uh, or at least eight days ago. Trump finally signed the bill Sunday after he says he got the Senate to agree to consider measures, including increasing payments to $2,000. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Well, the outgoing speaker of the Texas House of Representatives says he has tested positive for COVID-19 after his wife became sick on Facebook. Steve Bonin wrote that he was diagnosed with COVID-19 caused with the disease caused by the coronavirus this weekend. The 48 year old Republican says his symptoms have been mild so far and that his family is quarantined. The speaker announced his illness as coronavirus hospitalizations in the state hover just below their summer peak. The Texas Department of State Health Services says more than 10,000 people are hospitalized in the state with confirmed cases of COVID-19. President-elect Joe Biden is set to deliver remarks about the challenges that he'll be inheriting. And he's going to be talking about it later this afternoon. So the president-elect plans to do so from Wilmington, Delaware, after his National Security and Foreign Policy Agency preview. Well, they actually are going to brief him. Now, Biden almost ended up speaking on the same day as the federal government shutdown. Another challenge he's going to be facing high unemployment numbers, millions of Americans could lose some benefits. Well, maybe not so much after President Donald Trump signed the bill in time. Well, the time now is 538, 63 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA. It's the beginning of the end of 2020. Thank goodness. We'll look back on some of the moments that made this, weir this year a little weirder than normal. <laughs> and up next, police identifying the man they say is responsible for that explosion in Nashville on Christmas Day. We have the latest updates. 63 degrees outside with Ew. live cam. You can't see anything. We have a lot of fog in the area. It's yucky. Will this fog clear up? Is it going to be warm today? And are we going to see a cool front this week? Mike will let us know when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back. Now to the latest on that Christmas Day explosion in Nashville. Authorities identifying the bomber and say that he also died in the blast. CNN's Daryl Forges has more on where this investigation now stands. 
A bomber identified. Investigators now say Anthony Quinn Warner was the suspect who blew up an RV in Nashville on Christmas morning. That he was present when the bomb went off and that he perished in the bombing. A source with direct knowledge of the investigation says enough of the RV remained for investigators to locate the vehicle ID number and identify 63 year old Warner as the owner. DNA gathered from human remains found at the scene also match Warner. Because we had a known suspect at the time, uh, we were able to have a known sample and then collect some uh, items from the suspect uh, for some relatives as well and uh, be able to match that DNA positively with his. Friday morning's blast damaged dozens of businesses in downtown Nashville and injured at least three people. An eerie recorded message coming from the RV warned the vehicle would explode in minutes. I just see orange and then I hear a loud boom. Authorities say many lives were saved thanks to the quick action by six police officers who evacuated people in the area. The motive is still unclear, but authorities did say the bomber acted alone. There is no indication presently that anyone else was involved uh, in this crime. Meanwhile, some 30 miles outside of Nashville, police shut down part of a highway on Sunday after a box truck was found playing similar recorded messages as the RV involved in the Nashville explosion. Authorities say the truck driver was detained and no explosives were found. In Nashville, I'm Daryl Forges. Time now is 543, 63 degrees out. Up next, we'll tell you how many people are expected to be traveling home from their holiday destinations. This Essay Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union. Hi, this is Sonia McDonald with RBFCU, wishing our military men and women a safe and happy holiday. We appreciate you, we thank you for your service, and you're in our prayers. Welcome back. In your morning consumer headlines, millions of Americans make their way back home after the holidays. AAA predicts the bulk of that travel will be on the roadways. And while overall air travel is down nearly 60% this time from last year, TSA numbers have jumped, showing more than 7 million people hitting the skies in the past seven days. That's the busiest stretch of travel since the beginning of the pandemic. All right, so we know 2020 has been a tough year for a lot of families, but there were some good moments as well. That's right. CNN's Jenny Moose has looks back at the most memorable oddball happenings in the past 12 months. 2020 was a roller coaster year on a roller coaster with more downs than ups. At Belmont Park near San Diego, the passengers were stuffed animals to lighten the mood during maintenance runs since no humans were allowed due to COVID. Three, two, one. The pandemic inspired ingenuity, be it the useless but satisfying mask launcher. Oh my God! Or the plastic hug time. Oh, I love you! I love that allowed a great grandmother to hug her grandkids, featuring gloves normally used for examining the nether regions of livestock. Hormel tried to bring home the bacon with this marketing ploy a mask with a scent of bacon. It was a year when weathermen and reporters got nabbed. If it is successful, guys. Very cool. Caught with her pants off, working from home. <laughs> and a soap opera actor had to make out with a mannequin. The lack of play dates during the pandemic made for strange bedfellows. <laughs> Two-year-old Theo Brady became inseparable from his bony buddy, Benny. But mom said after Halloween, we're going to try to put him away. Yeah, well, Benny's still there, though he did break in two. Fortunately, six-month-old Rich Humphreys is intact after making news as one of the world's youngest water skiers. And magician David Blaine reached new heights. Wow. Suspended from 52 helium balloons at an altitude almost five miles up. He released parachuting to earth on a perfect yeah. touchdown. More of a fumble was this botched art restoration in Spain dubbed the Potato Head of Valencia. It's Mr. Potato Head. Animals were a scream in 2020. Chico the parrot at a zoo in England parroted Beyonce's hit. If I were a boy, if I were a boy. 
<laughs> and if I were CNN's Joe Johns, yeah. I too may have tossed a step stool. After raccoons invaded the White House lawn and despite traps, twice tried to join Joe for live shots, once even grabbing at his trouser leg. Frickin' raccoons, man. And there was the fly insult that invaded Vice President Pence's hair for two minutes during a debate. Pizza Groundhog hogged a slice in Philadelphia while Pizza Rat Man entertained folks in New York. But what's more entertaining than a blooper? Name Popeye's favorite food. Chicken! Yves Dubois may have blown the answer. Spin it, Sherry. But the fast food chain Popeye's gave her a $10,000 check because they said they thought her answer was right. It was our favorite game show blunder of 2020. A year when we could all have used a spinach pick-me-up. Genie Mouse, CNN. Chicken! New York. That's fantastic. I've never seen that before. I just feel like it's so stupid, but so great at the same time. Yeah, you know, we needed those little moments, especially through this year. I was I was laughing very hard to myself watching that. That was a great package. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, so 63 degrees out there right now. We've seen some fog. So Samuel King, how have the roadways been affected? Showing up here, especially in the northwest part of town and then the southeast part of town too, down toward Elmendorf also having uh, that as well. And taking a look at 281 on the south side, it'll take you nine minutes from 410 to 1604, the seven minutes the other way going from 1604 to 410. And again, taking a look here, the southeast side, you see this 37 at 181 uh, thick fog in that area this morning, guys. All right, here's a picture from a couple of days ago. It was absolutely gorgeous out there, the sunrise, and it's not looking like that this morning. Some folks may see a bit of a sunrise, but most of us are just going to be seeing a lot of fog out there. And this picture actually looks like it is kind of uh, visibility has dropped down just a little bit. This is over there at 10 at 410. But again, visibility at the airport Port SA is still reporting in at 10 miles, but this can change very, very quickly as it uh, has in the past in New Braunfels is now seeing a little bit more fog. Third of a mile Randolph, quarter mile Stinson and Hondo is now at just a mile and a half. A little bit of fog around Castroville. It's gotten thicker in Pleasanton as well. Carrizo Springs, you're now seeing some fog. Brock Springs, half mile visibility. So overall, it is starting to get thicker. So where there's nothing being reported, that's kind of the uh, exception rather than the rule. And we will continue to see this fog for the next couple of hours. So dew point temperatures remain very high. We are going to keep the humidity around for the next couple of days. But the nice thing is it is at least going to to add to a chance of rain. So rain chances do go up tomorrow and then they're really going to start to go up on Wednesday and then watch in the far top left corner. Here's some of that drier air that's going to start to come in here and that will be about say midday on Wednesday. We'll still have some rain around though with that. So here's the computer model through tomorrow. We have a couple of showers scattered around the area and and then rain chances do start to go up on Wednesday throughout the day Wednesday and then into Thursday morning as well. We may actually see a couple of thunderstorms on Wednesday. And yes, the colors do change to some purples and blues out there in western parts of the hill country. And that is in the overnight hours Wednesday into Thursday morning early. And then that cold, cold pocket of air is going to continue to work its way across the area. And so we may see a little bit of mixed precipitation. Now the ground is very warm, so nothing's going to be sticking maybe, you know, on blades of grass or something like that. But this will continue to move across throughout the morning hours on uh, Thursday. So, you know, maybe a little bit of uh, say some chunky rain, some snow mixed in with some of the rain on Thursday, and that's all going to be moving on out. So we'll be clearing out. So if you are planning on going out on Thursday night for New Year's Eve, uh, the weather is going to be fantastic. And after that, we've got a great start to uh, 2021 cold in the morning and beautiful in the afternoons. 69 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies, and then we'll continue to see a little bit more sunshine. So a lot of stubborn fog this morning, maybe some mist, and then a little bit more sunshine this afternoon, up to 73 degrees. So once again, about 10 above normal. Then we'll see a couple of showers trying to move in here later on tonight, and 20% may be a little bit on the conservative side as far as rain chances. It will start to go up later on in the afternoon, especially much better chance for rain on Wednesday. Front arrives late. 
cold pocket of air sits on top of us, so some mixed precipitation, a little bit of rain with some a little bit of snow mixed in early on Thursday, and then we clear on out and some really cold mornings. Look like we're in store for another freeze Friday morning as well as Saturday morning. Beautiful start to the uh, to the new year, but the uh, end of 2020, which I just kind of typical for this year, is going to be a little bit on the interesting side on Thursday morning. Yes. Thank you so much, Mike. Time now, 554, 63 degrees up. All right, let's take a look at some of these lotto numbers. Pick three, one, one, six, fireball four, daily four, zero, one, eight, three, fireball six. Cash five, three, four, 12, 14, 19, lotto Texas, 12, 13, 18, 25, 32, 33. Powerball, Sarah, you were saying this is up to 341 million? No, it was, and now oh. it's up to 363 because there was a winner. Yes, yeah, so go buy your ticket. All right, well, in case you wanted to know the numbers, 10, 24, 27, 35, 53, Powerball 18, Power Play 2. We'll be right back. Even though the holiday season is wrapping up, our KSAC community partners are still highlighting a magical drive through experience. You and your family can enjoy an illuminated journey to the North Pole. Well, it looks like the North Pole. It is a mile-long light display surrounding the AT&T Center. The event runs through January 3rd. Half of the proceeds are donated to Spurs Give. Uh, Spurs Give is a Spurs sports entertainment nonprofit partner. To find out ticket prices and times, just head to KSAT.com. All right, still so much more coming up here on GMSA. When it comes to stress eating during this pandemic, thousands of people are suffering in secrecy. So just ahead, why the pandemic is sending people with eating disorders into a spiral and what health experts say you can do to help out. And taking a look out at those roadways right now, a little bit of fog covered in the San Antonio area. We're gonna check in with Samuel King, see how your morning drive looks. Right now on GMSA at 6 a.m., a fight between two roommates escalates. Now one man is dead. We have the details next. New details in the Christmas Day bombing that destroyed parts of Nashville. I'm ABC's Avery Harper in Washington. I'll tell you what investigators are revealing about the moments leading up to it. Coming up. And a thick fog. Oh, well, you can oh. kind of see the lights now. Maybe it's, you know, thinning out some. Well, Michael, let us know about the fog also how are things going to look today and he'll have our New Year's Eve and New Year's Day forecast in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Monday the start of the last week of 2020. It is Woo! Monday December 28th. There you go. Have you thought about your New Year's resolution yet, Sarah? No, I haven't. I was literally just thinking about it. I was going to ask you what your resolutions are, but I think what we should do is think about them. Okay. And then we'll talk about them, you know, when we get closer later in the week. All right. We'll be here all week. Yeah, I'm we're here. Wednesday. Yeah. All right. So we're also joined by Mike. Mike, we saw some of the, uh, oh, we're triple boxing. Hi. This is yes, so fun. we're triple yes. boxing. I have to go um, like So Mike, <laughs> we can't see anything outside. Uh, in some places, visibility is not bad. In other places, it's like pea soup. So uh, and it's going to be sticking around for the next couple of hours. And in this shot, as you were talking about, Sarah, at least we can see some of the cars trying to move along there, but uh, in many spots it is just uh, it's almost down to zero in places as far as the uh, the fog is concerned. Temperatures except for Del Rio a little bit cooler, but we do have a little bit of a uh, rain or some mist out there toward Uvalde. Carrizo Springs at 52 degrees and visibility again airport and Port SA still report 10 miles. Still no fog out there, but then you can basically turn the corner and run into a lot of fog. Randolph uh, stints in a lot of it and then heading out 10 and going in toward the whole country as well. Rock Springs, Uvalde, both at a quarter mile visibility and same thing over there, Gonzales and Victoria. So fog is covering most all of the area with a couple of minor exceptions here and there. And it, again, it will be sticking around throughout the rest of the uh, the morning. And as far as temperatures today, we're starting off very, very warm. Temperatures are well above normal as of right now. And then we will continue to warm up into the uh, about the mid to upper 60s by noon. We'll see some sunshine. The fog is going to be pretty stubborn through mid morning. And then we'll continue to uh, kind of clear just a little bit and a little bit of sunshine later on this afternoon. A high temperature up to 74. Rain chances start to go up starting tonight. Small chance for some showers. Then tomorrow a little bit better. Wednesday, very good chance for some rain. Then the last day of the year in the morning, 
could be on the interesting side. Maybe a little bit of uh, some mixed precipitation. More on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Samuel King and uh, we haven't had a lot going on around here this morning. Anything no. big? No, no wrecks at the moment, but you can see this is our, our road weather tool as we call it. And you can see uh, some of the fog uh, showing up uh, pretty bad, especially to the east. So if you're coming in from Seguin, that's something to uh, watch out for. And here in town at the medical center area, 14 minutes between Hebner to Woodlawn and Frederick Woodlawn to Hebner 15 up minutes. So a little bit of a slowdown there this morning as people are heading to work and taking a look at drive times across the area. 24 minutes on I-10 in from Bernie. 30 minutes on I-10 in from Seguin. So again, plan some extra time. Here's a look at Transguide 37 at Jones looking okay this morning. Guys, back over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Well, new this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after a fight escalated on the northwest side. This was a scene around 10 o'clock last night at the Tetro Student Village apartment. Officers say two roommates got into a fight and ended up in a parking lot. Police say that's when when they got there, they found one man standing on the curb and another man on the ground with a severe head injury. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene by EMS. SAPD says the other man is detained and will most likely be charged with murder. Also new this morning, police tell us a race situation racing caused eight vehicles to pile up on the highway. So take a look. Officers say it all happened just before 1130 last night. The main lanes of Loop 410 right before the Callahan exit. Now they tell us a Tahoe was the first vehicle to wreck. Then a black sedan pulled over. That's when the pileup began. Several people treated on the scene by EMS, including two small children. Luckily, though, no serious injuries to report. Police right now still investigating, trying to figure out how many people were involved in this racing on 410. Well, Seguin couple says they have been left with nothing following a fire that broke out in their neighborhood over the weekend. This happened at Young Creek RV Park in the 4800 block of FM 467 yesterday afternoon. When the New Berlin Volunteer Fire Department arrived to the scene, one travel trailer was fully engulfed in flames and two others and the shed were also already on fire. Two of those trailers are considered a total loss. Susan Pargett Pargeter says the homes belong to her and her boyfriend. She says the fire has left, left them feeling helpless. I just can't even think of anything right now. I'm just in overwhelm. I just would never want to see anyone else go through this. She says several dogs, chickens, a bird, and a pet turtle all died in the fire. Fire officials tell us the cause is still under investigation. And a Bear County Volunteer Fire Department now asking for your help this morning after their building was damaged over the weekend. So Bear County Sheriff's deputies say a 70-year-old woman drove right into the front of the Atta Bear County Line Fire Department. This after the 70-year-old had fallen asleep at the wheel. Now the assistant chief, Robin White, says the building and their equipment sustained tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage. Right now, they tell us it's going to be a while until their insurance kicks in. That means in the meantime, they're accepting any monetary or building supply donations. That way they can repair the damage done to their building. If you're interested in helping out, you can visit the story right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Now to the latest on the pandemic. Metro health officials updating the COVID-19 numbers after taking a three-day break because of the holidays. Now Bear County now has 1,000 people in the hospital, 1,282 new cases, and 999 backlogged cases. The total confirmed cases now sitting at 112,218 cases since the pandemic hit us here at home. Two more people died here in our community. Now we know, though, we also have 29 backlog deaths stemming from August 20th to December 23rd. The death toll in Bear County sitting at 1,510 people. Well, here's a look at the hospitalization rate. The last time we had a thousand people hospitalized was back on July 29th. Right now, 299 people are in the ICU and that's up nine since Friday and 159 are on ventilators. 17% of staffed hospital beds are available. Now to that Christmas Day explosion that damaged parts of downtown Nashville. This morning, the law enforcement officers who rushed to evacuate area residents they're being hailed as heroes. ABC's Avery Harper shares the latest about the man accused of causing it all. Good morning. Investigators are now calling that Nashville explosion a suicide bombing and are working to piece together a motive. 
This morning, new traffic camera footage showing the moment an explosion rocked downtown Nashville. Shortly after 1 a.m. Christmas morning, this RV seen parked outside the AT&T building. Investigators are now looking into Anthony Warner's psychiatric and medical history for clues to a motive. That he was present when the bomb went off and that he perished in the bombing. Following the explosion, agents could be seen carrying out bags of evidence from a home associated with him and reportedly exploring whether he may have been motivated by a paranoia over 5G cellular technology. Meanwhile, six Nashville police officers are now describing the moments before Friday's explosion. She said, OK, let me get my kids. And that kind of just like put my heart up in my throat. And then I hear a loud boom. And uh, as I'm stumbling, because uh, it, it rocked me that hard. I started stumbling. I just tell myself to stay on your feet, stay alive. The Rasmussen family made it out of their home just in time. As, as we're driving away, um, this massive explosion. I mean, it's this huge. I mean, I was looking forward driving, and I hear the sound, and the whole car shifts. Officials say they're working to determine if the AT&T building where that RV was parked was the bomber's intended target. Avery Harper, ABC News, Washington. Also in your morning headlines, an art display of Breonna Taylor installed earlier this month in Oakland, California, has been vandalized. The ceramic art display displayed in downtown Oakland with the phrase, say her name, Breonna Taylor. Now, police say a report was filed and they are now investigating the vandalism. The artist, Leo Carson, said he intends to repair the sculpture as soon as possible. He says the vandalism felt like an attack on Taylor and the Black Lives Matter movement. Carson has set up a GoFundMe page to help pay for the cost of the repair. Time now is 6.09, 63 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, turning carbon dioxide into jet fuel. How mm. some scientists say it could eventually lead to zero emissions in the air. Wow. Plus, learning about the history of the first soldiers who settled here in Texas. Our Eric Hernandez shares the details in today's Tejano Moments. Taking a look outside with live cam, 63 uh. degrees. That fog, oh, yep, it's <laughs> thick, it's heavy. <laughs> Feels kind of muggy outside. Mike will let us know about this fog, about today, and our forecast for the week when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Monday. In our Tejano Moment series, we've talked about the trail systems, the first four districts, and first governors of Texas. Now, we're going to be talking about the first soldiers who actually settled in the area. Erica Hernandez breaks down the details and the history. As New Spain was developing the area we now know as Texas, the first settlers were soldiers. They are the foundation of our society, our communities. Uh, they bring with them uh, their morals, their, their standards. And when those first soldiers and settlers came to this area, they created Villas and what we now know as La Villita. They were handpicked because they had families and had grown up on ranches. La Villas towns, if you will translate it, are important to every community because it's the actual uh, genesis, if you will, for the growth of communities that come later. And the location of the Villa important as well. La Villita in the 1700s was near the Presidio, the Alamo, and the river. These vias would be built throughout the area and they and the settlers who lived in them are of great significance. It's extremely important that we have awareness and understanding because we're talking about the fundamental contribution of Tejanos to Texas history for 150 years prior to the Battle of the Alamo. For more on these settlers or other Tejano history, you can visit texastejano.com. Erica Hernandez, Case at 12 News. So interesting. All right, now to a, a less historical story. If you're a fan of coffee and want a little bit of a buzz to start your morning, Interesting. Pabst Blue Ribbon has a new product just for you. Yeah, the company posted a picture of its new hard coffee, the dash of milk. It mm. says this brew balances a rich, creamy blend with a whipped vanilla flavor. The original coffee blend is 5% alcohol by volume and is available at 35 select retailers right here in San Antonio. Currently, the cold brew is only available in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Ohio and Illinois. The drink is slightly sweet and dairy free, according to the company. The cold brew is 4.2% alcohol by volume, and you can find a link to purchase a case, a case, right now there you go. on caseat.com. So, also, fun fact about PAPS, they're moving their headquarters to downtown San Antonio. 
Very cool. Yeah, so you're helping to San Antonio business, I guess. There you go. All right, let's take a look out at the roadways. Samuel King joining us. How does it look out there? Well, you'll need your full attention on the roadways, depending on what parts of the area you're in. We have some fog to the west, but most of it now seems to be the worst of it anyway. It seems to be to the south and east of town. Taking a look at some travel times right now on the north side on 281 from Belverde to 1604. Take you eight minutes inbound downtown and looking out to the north and east to New Braunfels and Seguin. Good morning. 26 minutes uh, from New Braunfels to downtown. Now 31 minutes from Seguin to downtown. Again, the fog is worse to that area. And taking a look now at Transkai, we have the situation here at I-10 and Crossroads. You can see there, there's a sort of a stalled vehicle on the ramp to Vance Jackson Road. So that's something to watch out for there, guys. All right, thank you, Samuel. And here it is, the quad box. Samuel, I think you called it a family photo? Yes, family pictures. Everyone right. smiles. Let's just weep out of the Let's do the old. Oh, and then. Oh, yeah. Where are you? Over there? All right. <laughs> not very good. Yeah, the Brady Bunch look. All right, Mike. Are we going to see this fog throughout the day? Uh, not throughout the day, but uh, throughout the rest of the morning. Then we will see some sunshine later on today. And uh, yeah, as the week progresses, it's going to stay very warm. Rain chances will start to go up, which is fantastic news. And then by Thursday, there is a chance to have a little bit of uh, some mixed precipitation around here. And it may last through uh, at least a good chunk of the, uh, the daytime hours of Thursday. And then we'll start to clear out by the evening hours. Look at these temperatures. I mean, this is what the normal high basically is. Upper 50s and low 60s around here. Visibility at the airport is still reported at 10 miles, but a lot of areas, I mean, it is is definitely pea soup. I love this picture from the uh, from the beach down there at Port A. That's great looking, a little sandcastle Christmas tree. Thank you very much for that. And this is looking at 10 westbound. This is the 410 I-10 camera, so it's uh, looking in toward downtown. A couple of headlights there, but Still, I mean, a lot of fog around and again, this is the exception as far as the visibility being 10 miles at the airport in Port S.A. Third of a mile Randolph, quarter mile Stinson, a lot of fog going out 10, going west on 90, going south on 37 and even going up north on uh, 35. Austin is down to a, a one mile, a lot of fog around Gonzales, Victoria, same thing, Rock Springs and Uvalde, and it will stick around throughout the next couple of days. There may or next couple of hours, pardon me, and there may be a little bit of mist and drizzle, a couple of little sprinkles associated with that fog as well. So watch that because the roads are going to be damp. So again, these temperatures are above what the normal high should be right now. And then we are going to be well above normal later on today, getting up in the low to mid 70s around here. So about uh, anywhere from 10, 12, close to 15 degrees above normal for high temperatures. Rain chances. We've got a couple of showers that are going to be trying to develop later on later on tonight. And then tomorrow, rain will continue to develop throughout the day. Um, an okay chance for a few showers uh, tomorrow. But then Wednesday, rain chances are definitely going to start to go up throughout the day. And we've got this cold pocket of air, which is going to be kind of working its way across the area. And so that may mix some of that rain with a little bit of frozen precipitation, maybe a little bit of sleet and or some snow mixed in kind of chunky rain. It's not going to stick. The ground is is very warm right now. Um, and this will be the situation in through probably by about uh, maybe some leftover showers by dinner time, and then things will uh, start to clear on out for Thursday night. And it's really going to get cold then Friday morning as well as Saturday morning and be beautiful to start off. 2020 69 degrees today at noon. Most of the cloudy skies high temperature again 70 uh, 73 74 degrees later on today. Then we are going to make it up to uh, 72 tomorrow. More clouds help keep temperatures down slightly and we are going to be uh, right around 70 on Wednesday. Better chance for some rain on Wednesday and then the cold air comes in here. The front moves in late in the day on Wednesday and cold enough air, maybe a little bit of mixed precipitation. I think we only stay in the low 40s on Thursday and then going into the first uh, few days of 2020. Looks great out there. All right, Mike, they uh, they cued the music, so I guess your time is up. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, it's like, Mike. It's like the Academy Awards. Yeah. That's it. You're off the stage now. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. 620, 63 degrees out. Well, coming up after the break, no more Varsity Blues for Full House star Lori Loughlin. Details on her expected release from prison today after serving time for the college admission scandal. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA.
Sachet Bright Crystal. A must in your medicine cabinet. Less sick days. Cold coming on? Zycam is clinically proven to shorten colds. Highly recommended. Zycam's love Zycam's unique zinc formula. It shortens colds. Zycam zinc that cold. Hyaluronic acid. There's a reason one serum is sold every minute. Revitalift Hyaluronic Acid Serum with our highest concentration of hyaluronic acid visibly replumps skin and reduces wrinkles. Revitalift Hyaluronic Acid Serum from L'Oreal. Hello, how can I? Sore throat pain? Try new Vicks Vapo Cool Drops and Honey Lemon Chill for a fast acting rush of relief like you've never tasted in. Honey Lemon. Vicks Vapo Cool Drops, now in Honey Lemon Chill. In this morning's GMA First Look, Walking Free. You have no idea how long I've waited to hear somebody say that. Lachlan reported to the Federal Correctional Institution in Dublin, California on October 30th. The facility is currently experiencing a COVID outbreak affecting over 180 inmates and three staff members. But her team telling ABC News, Lori is in isolation, so she is in no danger. The rules are that when you enter, you go into isolation for two weeks, and when you exit, it, you do the same. Lachlan was sentenced to two months in prison after pleading guilty for her role in the Varsity Blues college admission scandal. So what's next for Lachlan? And could she stage an acting comeback like fellow convicted Varsity Blues parent Felicity Huffman? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. In your tech news this morning, researchers at Oxford University taking a big step towards zero emission air travel. They've reportedly been able to turn carbon dioxide into jet fuel. Researchers say the process is simpler and less expensive than other alternative fuel possibilities. And right now they're actually in talks with industrial partners about possible production. And Tesla's drivers can now change the sound of their car horn thanks to a new software update. Its preloaded noises included some, like goats and other farm animals. Tesla CEO Elon Musk even tweeted about it without specifically mentioning a certain bodily function, which is also an option. Knock hmm. yourself out. There you go. <laughs> All right. Two and one. Not a bad start to the season. Remember, it's only 72 games this year. It was a close one between the Spurs and the Pelicans last night. Let's take a look at those highlights. First quarter. Let's see, part of the youth movement. Here we go, Jakob Podol working down low, flipping it up and in. Spurs would lead 18-16. Then in the second, Podol keeping it going. Beautiful feed from Patty Mills for the jam. San Antonio would go up 24-19. Pelicans, though, they found their rhythm midway through, bringing the score up 45-39. Spurs keeping it close. Spurs actually went into halftime trailing just two, 47-45. Let's take ahead to the third quarter. New Orleans, this is where they kind of got away with it. 14 points, that's how much they were up by. Silver and Black, though, they were able to come all the way back thanks to a 20-3 run. Bleed into the fourth quarter. Keldon Johnson finding Rudy Gay on the break. Puts it up and in. Rudy Gay finished with a team-high 22 points, and he came off the bench. As for the Spurs, they were able to take back the lead, but the Pelicans would end up winning a close one. So close, yet so far. Final here, 98-95. Pelicans, like I said, the Spurs now 2-1. and one. Good news, though, this week, the Spurs, they'll start a three-game homestand on Wednesday. First up, taking on the defending champions, Lakers, at 7.30. Then against L.A. on Friday at 7. And finally, hosting the Utah Jazz Sunday at 6. Remember, watch KSAT's instant replay on Sundays at 11 for all the highlights you need to know. Time now is 627, 63 degrees out. We're well, still ahead on GMSA providing support for people who suffer from eating disorders. How you can help someone in the situation get through the pandemic. Plus, hope is on the horizon for millions of people who have been relying on unemployment benefits. We have details on the newly signed COVID relief bill next. New this morning, a man in critical condition after a motorcycle crash. We have the latest details from police on the scene. Plus, moving forward with the coronavirus relief bill, what's next for the millions of Americans relying on unemployment benefits? And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. All right, it looks like it's fading a little bit. At first, through that this morning, we haven't been able to see anything. At least we get headlights now. We're going to check in with Samuel King and Mike Osterhage 
what you need to know to start your day. Good morning, 6.30 this Monday, December 28th, the last week of 2020. Sarah, oh. have you come up with your uh, New Year's resolution yet? You know, it's kind of like not worrying as much. Okay. People who know me, I might worry just a little too much. Maybe just chilling out a little bit. Chilling out a little mellow. A little mellow. All right, Mike Osterhage, what about you? You know, which is which is funny though, because looking at Sarah, because Sarah is one of the just cheeriest people. I mean, yeah. she walks in the newsroom and just always, you know, smiling and happy. She hides it well. I've I've got to uh, start going back to the the gym. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> we'll just leave that alone right there. Uh, yes, it is actually looking a little bit better. This is westbound I-10 traffic. 410 is somewhere right around in here. We're looking down toward downtown right now, so it has thinned a little bit. And granted, this camera's on top of a building out there, so it is a couple of hundred feet up. It's not right down at the surface. Temperature at the airport, 63, dew point 60. So a ton of humidity out there in southeasterly wind continues to pull that in. And again, we still have, now Castrill has improved up to 10 miles, so that has gotten a little bit better, but Randolph, Stinson, uh, Pleasanton, New Braunfels still have plenty of fog, a lot more off to the west in the hill country. Rock Springs down to Uvalde, Gonzales, Victoria off to the east, and then going up 35 as well. So this will stick around for the next couple of hours. Roads may be kind of damp as well, and then we'll see some sunshine later on today, but still going to be very warm and humid. Temperatures will be about 10 degrees above normal. Roughly the same thing tomorrow. A little bit better chance for some rain and then a better chance for some rain on Wednesday. Maybe even a couple of uh, thunderstorms mixed in. Then a strong front's going to be moving through late on Wednesday. Temperatures will be dropping down overnight and there's a pocket of cold air that's going to be basically parked over the hill country and moving across the area Thursday morning. And so there may be a little bit of mixed precipitation to start off the day on Thursday and then things will be clearing out just in time for New Year's Eve and the start of 2021. Details in just a couple of minutes. It's time server traffic right now and Samuel King and I guess it's because a lot of people are off this week. There haven't been a lot to talk about this morning. No, not many uh, crashes at all despite the fog that you see to the east there. So a pretty quiet morning. We hope it stays that way. Hopefully it does stay that way. But here's a look at Transguide here at 37 and 181. You can see uh, the thick fog in that area. It's been there all morning. Taking a look at some drive times in that area. 1604, 181 to 35 will take you 31 minutes each way. And from a 35 to 281, 15 and 16 minutes each way for you. And one more drive time near 281 uh, to 181. 15 minutes. Finally, a look around the region. 24 minutes are coming in on 87 from Lavernia. Back over to you. Thank you, Samuel. We begin this half hour with an attempted ATM theft at a Chase Bank on Colony Drive near Warsbach. Officers tell us the suspects had two to three vehicles on hand around 445 this morning. One which was stolen out of on army. The suspect tied the ATM to a chain and tried to pull off the security bars and padlock, but were unable to do so. Uh, police say they were unable to get into the safe and that a possible suspect ve vehicle was left in a car wash in the same parking lot. The other vehicle was ditched in 3600 block of Colony Drive, still running with a broken chain attached to the bumper. The scene remains under investigation. San Antonio police tell us a man is in critical condition this morning after a motorcycle crash on the west side. So take a look. This all happened at just after midnight. This is the 5400 block of Grissom. It's right near Bandera Road. San Antonio police there telling us the man lost control of his motorcycle, crashed into the curb. SAPD says when they got there, the man was unresponsive. They found him on the sidewalk. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Meanwhile, three people were forced to evacuate their home in Shirts after it caught fire overnight. Shirts police say it happened just before 2 in the 2 o'clock this morning in the 100 block of Oak Bloom. The home is in Pecan Grove Trailer Park, so as a precaution, nearby neighbors were also evacuated, but Shirts firefighters were able to get the fire contained quickly. So far, a cause has not been determined and no injuries were reported. Help is finally on the way for millions of Americans after President Donald Trump finally signed that COVID relief bill just last night. It follows days of chaos triggered by his demand for bigger stimulus checks after the legislation was overwhelmingly approved by both parties. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has the details. Nearly one week after calling it a disgrace, President Trump is backing down, agreeing late Sunday to sign a $2.3 trillion coronavirus relief and government funding bill, averting a government shutdown just hours before tonight's deadline. In a statement, the president saying, 
Quote, I am signing this bill to restore unemployment benefits, stop evictions, provide rental assistance, add money for the Paycheck Protection Program, and much more. The president, spending the weekend golfing in Florida, had faced intense pressure to give in as unemployment benefits for 14 million Americans expired. It took Congress six months to negotiate the bipartisan relief bill. The president's own team, including Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, helped negotiate it. But then the president last week demanding last minute changes, tweeting, quote, I simply want to get our great people $2,000 rather than the measly 600 that is now in the bill. Some Republicans criticized him for not raising his objections earlier. If you want to make a $2,000 check, negotiate that from the beginning. I understand he wants to be remembered for advocating for big checks, but... Uh the danger is he'll be adv he'll, he'll be remembered for uh, chaos and, and misery and erratic behavior if uh, if he allows this to expire. The president in a statement last night suggested he signed the bill after the Senate agreed to consider increasing the checks to $2,000, which the House is expected to pass today. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell made no such commitment in his statement overnight, saying only that the president's, quote, leadership has prevented a government shutdown at a time when our nation could not have afforded one. Meanwhile, the delay in approving the bill already having consequences. Those Americans getting the extra $300 in unemployment benefits will likely miss one week of payments because of the delay. I worry and I care about myself and my family. We need COVID relief so bad. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. Well, there are two vaccines authorized for emergency use authorization in the United States. Vaccines from Moderna and Pfizer are being distributed and administered around the country. But even though there's a lot of excitement, there are still a lot of questions. Dr. Andrea Shields is a maternal fetal medicine specialist with the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. She joined us live on Leading SA yesterday morning. We talked about the vaccine in regards to pregnancies. We have a little bit of information, at least, that that vaccine is safe in pregnant women and breastfeeding women. In fact, about 84 women who got the vaccination during the trials became pregnant, and those pregnancies um, did well. Uh, there wasn't any increased risk of miscarriage or adverse outcomes compared to women who didn't get that vaccine. So as far as the mRNA technology, it seems to be uh, safe in pregnancy. Now, this is only a small piece of what Dr. Shields had to say. We also talked about the possible impact on breastfeeding, risk of COVID for pregnant mothers, and future studies being done. You can find the entire interview right now on KSAT.com. And Sarah and I have fascinating interviews every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. during our leading essay segments. If you ever have any questions or suggestions on who you'd like to hear from, you can submit them right now. Well, meanwhile, U.S. health officials believe the coronavirus mutation that set off alarms in parts of Britain is no more apt to cause serious illness. Dr. Anthony Fauci of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases says it will not be resistant to vaccines than the strain afflicting people in the United States either. Even so, he says the variant still must be taken very seriously and is being studied intensively. Although the CDC is urging Americans to stay home during the holidays, new statistics show that's not happening. The Transportation Security Administration says it screamed more than a million people the day after Christmas. December 23rd saw even more people traveling by plane, marking the heaviest travel day since the pandemic began. TSA screening numbers also surged the weekend before Christmas. This all comes as experts warn of a post-holiday surge. In your morning headlines, authorities say a United States Army Special Forces sergeant based in Florida is now charged with shooting and killing three people at an Illinois bowling alley. The Winnebago County State's attorney says 37-year-old Duke Webb has now been charged with three counts of murder and three counts of first-degree attempted murder. Police say that the men who died were 73 years old, 65 years old, and 69 years old. He didn't provide any names, but he does say that Two teenagers also shot and wounded and that a 62 year old man was shot several times. He is now in critical condition. Well, Georgia Republican Kelly Loeffler and Democrat Raphael Warnock advanced to the January 5th U.S. Senate runoff in Georgia. They now face the challenge of over the two million voters who chose one of the 18 candidates in November's election. Polls largely show have showed that they have largely succeeded Turnout could be the deciding factor in that race and the runoff between Republican U.S. Senator David Perdue and Democrat John Ossoff. 
Two wins would give Democrats control of the U.S. Senate. A split or two GOP wins would maintain Republican control. Time now, 641, 63 degrees south. Well, thousands of people are suffering in secrecy. The pandemic is sending people with eating disorders into a spiral. Details next. Welcome back. COVID-19 has been a nightmare for more than 30 million Americans in the United States, especially those who suffer from eating disorders. And oftentimes it's actually triggering them, sending them spiraling. And on top of that, the stress of the approaching holidays, the combo can become life threatening. Devin Clark has the story. These photos are shocking. Grown women surviving on a few hundred calories a day. And that really scared me and I just started to just was really tired and just felt a lot of continual pain. 26 year old Lydia Rhino has been struggling with her weight for the past six years. But it also turned very quickly and led me down a path that was not going to be sustainable. The stresses of a college and a bad breakup began Lydia's path into anorexia. It was just a lot based around just control. Now in active recovery, the pandemic tested her priorities again. I got really just nervous. The isolation is already a challenge for patients with eating disorders. The National Eating Disorder Association reports a 78% increase in their helpline since the pandemic started. To not be able to see caregivers, to be able to have people come support them in meals, and then to be scared to even seek treatment. Is it gonna be safe to go out? Other pandemic triggers, empty grocery store shelves, the unknown, and social media. For many of them, they're getting bombarded with even more messages around be careful around how your body looks and what you're eating. 70% of people who are now struggling with an eating disorder don't seek help. My greatest fear is that they'll wait too long to reach out to anyone. During COVID, virtual therapy sessions have been a lifesaver for Lydia. I don't think that I would be in the mental and headspace that I am now without being able to just like surrender to doing it virtually. During a pandemic or not, remember. You don't have to suffer alone. I'm Devin Clark reporting. <laughs> All right, well, taking a live look out at the roadways. Samuel King, how's the look out there? Well, along with the fog, we do have a couple of crashes uh, right now. The first one we'll take you here is down on the south side. This is Loop 410 at Protite Drudenton. Uh, that'll slow you down in that area. Also here, a new one on Fredericksburg Road at Magnolia. And taking a look at the travel time in this area, driving through uh, the medical center 13 minutes each way now between Hebner and Woodlawn. And taking a look at Transguide, I-10 at the Y, looking okay, but traffic's picking up. And then a little bit of fog there on I-10 and ProBand. Again, something to watch out out for and make some extra time this morning if you're heading out guys. All right, Samuel King, thank you so much. You talked about the fog a little bit. It still looks a lot better than it did when we started the show today. And again, depending on where you are in some of those places, though, yes, the fog has definitely eased up a little bit, but uh, in some spots it is still just very, very thick. Beautiful picture from a couple of days ago. Lavernia sunrise coming up. Uh, some folks may see a sunrise, but most of us I don't think are going to be seeing much of a sunrise. And again, this is looking at westbound I-10 traffic coming toward the camera, and this is pointing toward downtown. This is over there at 410 and I. 10. And again, this camera's on top of the building, so it's a couple of hundred feet up. Now, rain chances are going to be improving the next couple of days. Might have a little bit of mist out there this morning, but uh, overnight and tomorrow, a little bit more. We'll have some showers around and even more than tomorrow throughout the afternoon going into Wednesday. And then Wednesday, a very good chance for showers, even a couple of thunderstorms thrown in, especially going in through the afternoon hours. Then we get into Thursday morning, and that's when there's a very cold pocket of air, which is going to be working its way across the area. And that's when we might see uh, some mixed precipitation in especially portions of the hill country and then working its way across. And some of this rain may actually stick around in through then the late afternoon hours on Thursday. Then we'll start to clear out for Thursday night. But again, this is just going to be a little bit of uh, maybe some snow or sleet mixed in. And the ground is very, very warm. So it's not like it's going to be sticking or anything like that. Uh, may, as I'd like to call it, some chunky rain around there. But That'll be sort of a gee whiz thing on Thursday. Then again, that's going to start to clear on out and we'll have some beautiful weather then starting to technically end up the last couple of hours of 2020 Thursday night into Friday. Beautiful weather on Friday. So here's what the uh, satellite uh, picture looks like as of right now. And the low, which is going to be working its way across here, is that right there. And it's going to tap into some of this very, very cold air up there to the north. And that's going to be pushing on in here again, starting late on Wednesday and then overnight into Thursday. So temperatures will continue to drop down. It'll be close to freezing. 
Um, not, I don't think, getting there when, or excuse me, Thursday morning here in town, but again, in portions of the hill country. And it, it'll be a real close call as to what the temperatures are in the various layers of the atmosphere, whether we see any little bit of snow or maybe a, a little bit of sleep. But again, ground temperatures are going to be warm enough to where nothing that the falls will be sticking. So again, that low continues to work its way across the area as we go in toward Thursday and Friday, and that's that cold pocket of air that's going to be pulling down some of that that colder air around here to maybe support a little bit of mixed precipitation by Thursday morning. Today, 69 at noon, most of the cloudy skies will still have a lot of stubborn clouds around here, and then kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds later on today. 74 for high temperature, anywhere from 10, 12 degrees above normal. About the same thing tomorrow, although a better rain chance and even better still on Wednesday. And then we get into Thursday, and that's when we're going to start to see. I shouldn't have stepped down here. Sorry, we've got been on vacation for a while. Uh, <laughs> mix of some uh, snow and rain together on Thursday, and that's going to be throughout a good chunk of the day. Then that's going to then we'll start to clear on out by Thursday night. And the start of 2021 looks great. Going to be cold, though, starting off freezing by Friday morning. I was going to say, Mike, you're just excited to end 2020. You're ready to walk off. I know. Indeed, I think everybody is. I'm the mic drop moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned Thursday, the chunky rain instead of really. I'm really seeing things on Facebook. People are like, oh, it's going to snow on New Year's Eve. It's going to be chunky rain, right, Mike? Yeah, and that's going to be in the first part. So again, if you are planning on heading out Thursday night, everything's going to be going to be moving on out of here. But it'd be the first part of the day on Thursday. Perfect. All Thank right. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. 651, 63 degrees out. Well, 80 H. D does always wear off after childhood. Tomorrow on GMSA, what to be aware of and how to manage it. And we heard from Samuel King, Mike Osterhage, taking a look out at the roadways. Can't really see much. There we see some headlights. We're going to keep you posted if anything pops up. We'll be right back. In the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police tell us a fight escalated to the parking lot between roommates. One man is now dead. Uh, police say when they got there, they found one man on the ground with severe head wounds, pronounced dead by EMS on the scene. SAPD says the other man was detained, now could be facing murder charges. All right, taking a look at those roadways, it actually started to pick back up in the last half hour. Oh yeah, definitely have a couple of uh, crashes now here, Max and Sarah. Uh, taking a look here on the south side, 410 at Poteet Jurtenton, a little bit of a delay there. Also here on the northwest side here, Fredericksburg and Magnolia, uh, there's a crash there, but it seems like things are starting to improve there. And take a look at some drive times around the region. 29 minutes if you're coming in from I-10 at Seguin. Uh, 20 on 90 from Castroville. And take a look at Transkite there, Mike. You can see the fog is still pretty thick out there. Yeah, very thick on the uh, the south side down there around 37, 181. But then over there, uh, 10, 410. Uh, granted, this camera's up higher uh, on top of that building, so we can't see a little bit. And visibility is still pretty good from Castroville to the airport. It has improved slightly at Randolph, but still a lot of fog around here. It is going to be sticking around throughout the, uh, the rest of the morning. And temperatures are very mild. We are going to make it up into the mid-70s later on. Sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds and We'll keep tabs on what may or may not happen Thursday morning. All right, Mike, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you back here at 9 a.m. See you in a bit.